Hi, everyone. Welcome. Megan McCann here, founder of Soul Success. And I have a super special surprise for you today. I have my dear friend, Robin Elander, and I, I've known you for like 10 years and we've worked closely together. And did I say your last name right? Because then when yeah, I, every time I say your last name, I'm like, is she just that nice person that doesn't correct me? <laughs> you got it right this time. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> so Robin is the founder and director of Global Good Impact, which I really want to get into that because I feel like with Soul Success, we have so many women coming in from all over the world. And a lot of these entrepreneurs are so invested in giving back to the global community and really making a footprint on this planet. So Robin, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Megan. This has been such a fun journey with you and Alicia and the whole crew. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, so I started Global Good Impact um, about seven-ish years ago now. Um, with really the desire to offer educational programs, um, project management, and help people get the tools, resources, and the confidence to get their ideas out into the world. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really exciting ride. I've had an opportunity to do some amazing uh, projects and also help people with their own projects, getting them out of their head, and then also some coaching retreats to really dive a little bit deeper because there's so much that goes into maximizing your impact. And so that's mm -hmm. really what the whole business is about. It's helping empower in individuals, but also empower and strengthen communities. I love that. I love that. So, you know, you, you help entrepreneurs make an impact on the planet and you know, you've been helping Elisa and I and the rest of the team with the Soul Success Summit in Productions. And I know being a local Santa Barbara resident, you've helped with the Santa Barbara Solstice, which is one of the biggest events in Santa Barbara. I mean, I just remember growing up there and that being like one of my favorite events of the year. <laughs> a lot of fun. And there's a lot of work that goes into not only running an event, but making an impact and making it memorable. So what would you say are one of the biggest mistakes that you see people make when it comes to putting on an event such as a summit or a solstice or even just a yoga retreat or even just something in their backyard? Trying to do it all alone. Uh, is probably mm -hmm. the biggest mistake you could make because you really need a team to bounce ideas off yes. of, distribute the weight of the labor, and to be able to make the community connections outside of your immediate circle. I'd say that that's kind of the number one, don't do it, you know, do it as a team. It's more fun <laughs> that way <laughs> and it makes everything so much more possible. Oh, I love that you said that. In fact, I went live in my Facebook group yesterday talking about this exact concept of, you know, and, and I think especially when we're start, first starting off, we try to DIY everything. Yes, because, and I've done it. I totally have done it, well, but I've not the best plan. <laughs> Well, me too. And, and, um, you know, I've, you've been in business for a long time. I've been in business for a decade and I felt like I was at that point for way too long. And it really stunted my growth because all of a sudden you're like in burnout mode. You're trying to figure out, you're wearing like so many different hats and you're trying to figure out, um, so many different pieces to the puzzle when you can propel your business and the event light years if you just ask the experts and you en enroll those who can help you. Very true. Yes. That's what I've really become an expert at, building a team for a particular project, for an event, for a campaign. So you kind of see what the end goal is and you work back and then you build the team to make that happen. So that's a pretty exciting uh, endeavor that I do for my own projects, but also help 
different nonprofits do it, entrepreneurs, and just individuals who have something that they want to do in their own community or on a global scale. Mm, awesome. Yeah. And Robin, I don't know if I've ever asked you this, but what, what got you into, you know, like, how did you come up with global good impact and really what were kind of some of the catalysts that got, got you moving in that direction? Cause I know when we first met, you were making that transition cause we worked together with a separate business and now it's coming around full circle and we're connected again, which is so beautiful. Uh, but how has that whole process kind of evolved for you? Well, this was an opportunity to connect everything I've already done into one business. So I had worked for a number of different organizations, uh, city government, um, nonprofit organizations, private. I had done some research all over the world for about two years, traveling and looking at different organizations, what was working well, what wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I really like starting new things and helping people start new things. And so I was doing that for different organizations, but really you can only do that so many times when you're working for a particular entity, you kind of <laughs> yes. need to keep that thing going. And, you know, there's value to the continuing process, but I wanted to keep helping people do that and also have the opportunity to pick diverse things that fit my own interests. I really like the health and wellness element. I like education um, and really deep community work. And I was able to combine that through uh, starting my own business. Um, I had also worked at Antioch um, University for some time and helped them start their MBA in um, on, uh, social entrepreneurship as well as their women uh, leadership program and then there's also this organization in town called women's economic ventures and i took a program through how to start my all of those really made it sense for me to explore how people do it but then also put those ideas and implement them mm, beautiful and it's it's so fun listening to these stories because I think one of the biggest common mis misconceptions with, you know, women who are, um, you know, dis dissatisfied in their career or whatever it is that they're doing is that they have to stay where they're at and they need to, you know, either get more education or find another opportunity elsewhere as opposed to manifesting it within yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And you are a beautiful example of that, Robin. Just watching your whole journey over the past 10 years has been so mm. beautiful. And like I said, I love how everything is really coming around full circle for, as, for me and for you. And, and we're locking arms again. And I just, um, I'm just so grateful to have you be such an instrumental part of the Soul Success Summit. It really wouldn't it wouldn't be here without you. And I just so appreciate yeah, everything that you do. <laughs> Thank you. And, and the women and, you know, these women who are coming in from all over the world, it's the same. It's like they, I, I what did I hear? I think it was Tony Robbins or some other mentor that said that um, magic happens either from desperation or inspiration. And I think for me, it's been both. It's been a desperate situation, either being dead broke or dissatisfied to the point of like disgust or incredibly inspired to propel my mission forward. And it's been both. So what do you say for you? Like, what do you, do you think that you operate from the lens of inspiration, desperation, or both? You know, it's always a little bit of both, but I mean, I think it's more on the side of inspiration and through trust, because I feel like yes. through trust in community, whether it's through additional teammates or understanding through others what is working, and you develop mm -hmm. and test and you kind of take a risk, and then you begin to not only trust yourself, but trust others, and I feel like that's when really the magic starts happening, because you see possibilities in a different way mm -hmm. and it becomes real. Like it doesn't feel like you are 
still stuck in a certain way because you are learning to be able to implement and you have the people and the experts around you to be able to help you do that. And that's what I so love about this whole summit because last year, um, as I was uh, getting to know everybody there, it was an opportunity to just really see what people had skills and expertise in. But then over the course of the entire next year, learning what they were doing and kind of beginning to grow in a relationship with them and then having a lot of them come back and then add to that, it just really becomes special when that is happening. And I think you and I have grown from it in terms of what we've been able to do with our business, opportunities we both sought out and are seeking together. I mean, it's, that's where it's gets really exciting. Yes. Yeah. And this is something that I always love to talk about is it really takes a tribe, a community to grow your business just as it does your child, your children. <laughs> I mean, you know, being a mom to, to teenagers, um, you know, it's like learning how to lean on, on support when you need it and stop trying to figure it out all on your own because you're just going to burn yourself out and go crazy sometimes yeah. like I do with my kids. <laughs> yeah, you've got to ask for help even if you don't know how to do something. Like there's often experts around and even if you don't know of an expert on a particular subject, if you ask for one, someone will probably tell you who they are and they're probably going to rock most likely. Yeah. I mean, usually people suggest people they love and that's when it starts becoming more possible. Absolutely. I mean, even within our Facebook group, if I'm working with a client and you know, just the other day, like I had a client who had a very specific business question that was outside of my realm and I posted it while we were in our meeting. And then five minutes later, I had like six or seven different comments that answered this really important question and it just goes back to having your community of, of experts so that you don't have to try to figure it out all on your own. If I have a legal question, I know I have my team of lawyers within the soul success community. If I have a branding question, if I have an events question, um, I know to go to you and then some of the other event planners within our community and like I said, it really propels your business forward instead of waiting and trying to find the answer all by yourself. Um, it's, it's just been so beautiful to have that. So thank you for really, you know, impressing upon people to, to build. It doesn't have to be soul success if that does, if that's not what speaks to you, but find your group, your tribe that you can lean on to help propel you to the next level so that you can access your highest potential. And I even, and I tell people in my talks to have multiple communities around you separate mm -hmm. so that you can learn here, learn here. And even if something doesn't go as well here, you still have several more to go to and to explore and grow. And it just makes things possible. And you don't have to always have overlap because sometimes you're trying to grow something here and you don't want to talk about it publicly yet. So it's, you know, there's just opportunities where if you have multiple communities, not to not that you want to be different people in them, that's not what I'm suggesting, but just the more groups that you can tap to grow yourself and to support them, it just so much becomes possible. Absolutely. Beautiful. Okay, well, Beautiful. Yes. Which leads me to the summit, which is less than two months away. I feel like these next two months are going to go by so fast. No, I know. I know. <laughs> and I, I'm just, after the magic that happened last year with the yoga, the meditation, the brilliance behind the talented speakers that we have there, the wine reception where we're networking and we're finding new business partners, new clients. Um, it, I just, I just can't wait to see how this is going to fast forward the next year is when it comes to our business. So if you would like to follow Robin to Santa Barbara this March 30th and 31st, and I know that you're going to be at both events, so you're speaking at the March event. 
you can enter Robin's first and last name when you get your ticket in the coupon code to receive $100 off your ticket. And it's R-O-B-I-N-E-L-A-N-D-E-R in the coupon code and uh, receive $100 off your ticket so that you can be a part of this magical retreat weekend with amazing women. Um, please do that. And Robin, how can people get a hold of you if they want to find more info about what Global Good Impact is and how you impact people? Sure, they can go to the website at globalgoodimpact.com uh, or I have a Facebook page also under Global Good Impact. You can email me at, uh, well, I'll just leave it at that for now because that's just <laughs> my, my contact information is on both of those things. Perfect. Awesome. Well, I love you so much, sister. Thank you so much for Absolutely. everything right that you do. I'm so grateful for you and uh, I'll see you very soon. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.